Yeah, the human right to education is a, is a fundamental human right, and it is, uh, as we all know, enshrined in the uh, International Charter of Human Rights. <clears throat> I mean, the Universal Declaration for Human Rights, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and the International Covenant on Economic, Social, Cultural Rights. This is the International Charter of Human Rights. But as you know, right to education as all human rights has some historical development. So it's progressively also developed and it is constantly included into other um, human rights instruments, such as the Convention of the Rights of the Child and more recently in the Convention of the Rights of People with Disabilities. And I am mentioning this convention because it's key, uh, because with this convention, the concept of inclusion on inclusive education has been included into the uh, human rights framework on, on education. Thanks to the uh, special rapporteur on health and then the special rapporteur on education, the uh, Committee on Economic, Social, Cultural Rights came up with the General Comment 13. And I'll mention this because it's very important, this General Comment. And this uh, General Comment provided the uh, a more precise uh, legal and conceptual framework on the right to education, saying that the right to education has uh, key obligations, entails key obligation for states. And these key obligations uh, are exhibited in four interrelated uh, features. One is accessibility. So accessibility is a key obligation from states, meaning the, the need to provide access to education in terms of physical access, but in terms of economic access as well, and in terms of providing education without any discrimination or based on any grounds. So accessibility is, is maybe the most important obligation of states. And the second one is availability. And when, when we say availability, we're talking about the conditions that should be provided by governments, and by states in general, to make education possible. And this has to do, first of all, with financing. I mean, if financing is not there, it will be very difficult to, to guarantee the right to education. So providing a good, predictable, and constant and adequate fin financing to education is, is, uh, is crucial for, for fulfill the state obligations. And then the third um, feature that the General Common 13 explains is uh, the obligation of acceptability, which has to do with the pertinence of education and has to do with relevance of education and in general has to do with the quality education. So we understand that we have the right not to any education, but to a certain education which fulfill the aims as stated by the uh, legal uh, human rights uh, legal instrument instrument sorry and then the fourth is the adaptability and this obligation is also important uh, when we understand that education should respond to specific needs uh, of specific people, but also to communities. So education has to be flexible enough to respond to the diverse uh, communities that we have in, in our countries. Four is part of the Sustainable Development Agenda, which first of all is part of a development focus, not necessarily a human rights focus. I mean, they're not conflict, obviously, but the approach is different. 
And secondly, uh, the SDG 4 is part of a political agenda, while the right to education is a legal approach and is part of a human rights agenda. So I would say that this is a kind of complementary relationship between the ODG and the right to education agenda. But I would say that the SDG 4 kind of falls short compared to the entire set of obligations established by the international human rights law. Mm -hmm. And let me just give you some examples. For instance, the SDG 4 uh, in, in their targets addresses uh, primary and secondary schooling, no? primary and secondary education, while the right to education approach has this kind of lifelong approach uh, stating that right to education should be an universal right starting from birth, from death, no? So all these kind of complexities of adult education are not necessarily and completely addressed by the uh, SDG for, And mm -hmm. the same happens in terms of the early childhood ed education, and the same happens in terms of the uh, access to, to, to education, and several others uh, mm -hmm. things that maybe we will have the chance to discuss later on. So in a nutshell, I think it's a complementary agenda, but the DG4 falls short in terms of the approach provided by the legal framework. Mm -hmm. Public policies, programs, plans, according to the international human rights law and not a right-based approach is doing whatever people consider appropriate and responding to specific uh, private uh, needs for instance or views so that's why it's important to understand that public policy should respond to the key obligations as stated by the international human rights law so we is the only way to have a kind of coherent development approach. Mm -hmm. I mean, development cannot be happening without a human rights base. And uh, and this is why it's important to move education from the development views to the human rights views. And human rights views obviously is connected to the to development, but at the same time provide, providing a different view of development. Mm -hmm. Development has to do with building capacity, human capacities to respond to, to the human needs. Mm -hmm. And and this is certainly uh this certainly resonates with the key principles, uh the, the key human rights principles. Education in emergencies and equality and and, and inclusion uh, and, and finally transformative education. We think that education cannot survive if education cannot transform constantly its aims and its, its ways to, to deliver. So within these areas, we have also specific campaigns. Nowadays, we are pushing for one important campaigns on focus on getting or pushing for the new uh, UN tax convention. We really think that if we do not uh, take steps towards tax justice, it will be very difficult for countries, specifically impoverished countries, to the resources they need to respond to education. We all we know that uh, resources for education should come from inside the country. Mm -hmm. it's, it has been said that they 97% of resources needed for education should come from, from taxes from, from the country, not from international cooperation. This is not sustainable. Uh, so that's why we think that uh, the, the new UN tax convention is key. And that's why we are moving ahead with this 
campaign. We are also moving ahead with other campaigns on education technology within the digital education is important. of the workshop is the human right to education. I mean, we will try to recover some of the elements we just shared. We will go in deep on the key state obligations on the right to education. We will try to examine closer from your perspective also, what is the key elements that we should recover from the situation in your country and how this reflect to other regions as well, because we're living in a single world, sharing some of the problems. So we will take a look at this at this uh, process, and we will also come up with suggestions on how to strengthen the legal frameworks and the policy frameworks mm -hmm. to to advance on the right to education.